Hey folks, this is Kalani. It's patch week, so you know what that means. A whole bunch of bugs, the usual spot of lag, and all the add-on updates you can stomach. Actually, this patch hasn't been too problematic so far. It seems like a pretty clean update, if I'm being fair, so that's super awesome to see. But a new patch always means new opportunities to gear up. Not only do we have more ways to gear up in patch 8.2, but we can take our item level significantly higher as well. The good news is that a large chunk of the gearing sources in patch 8.2 are available to everyone. So what are we waiting for? Let's have a chat about how you can start cranking up that item level now that patch 8.2 has finally arrived. The first thing you want to set your sights on is the new Benthic gear. This is primarily available in Najatar and will provide you with an alternate gearing path if you really want to pursue it. The gear starts at item level 385 and you can upgrade it all the way to 425. That's 5 item levels below the Eternal Palace Heroic Raid gear, so you can get pretty far without stepping foot in either a dungeon or a raid just by relying on the new Benthic gear. It's actually super easy to get your hands on the initial item too. They come as gear tokens, which you can then use to get an appropriate piece of gear for your current character. That means you will never end up with male gear on a priest and what have you, so the Benthic gear tokens are always going to be worth using if you need to catch up with item levels. As a quick note, the Benthic tokens are also bind on account, so if you don't need them on your main character, you can hand them over to one of your alts to help them gear up pretty quickly. Right now, Benthic tokens come from a variety of sources in Najatar. You can get them as a reward from certain quests. You're actually given one for free in the intro quest, so that's really nice. They're also rewarded from world quests every now and then. You can get them in the little satchels you earn by leveling up your new bodyguard friends. And they're even available as a reward from the mission table now. So it might be worth checking back with your long-forgotten followers on your faction boat if you really want to maximize your Benthic gear token acquisition. Remember, because if they are bind on account, that's going to be worth it on all of your characters, not just the ones who need the gear. Now, because all of these sources rely on at least a little bit of RNG, you know, if the world quests don't reward the tokens or the missions don't pop up, then you won't get any tokens at all. So there is a reliable way to purchase the Benthic tokens that you want as well. There's a vendor in your Najatar hub that will sell every available Benthic token for 5 mana pearls each. With just a few days of work down in Najatar, you could buy a token for every slot very easily, so you shouldn't have to worry about gearing up alts to 385 anymore whatsoever. Benthic gear will make it incredibly quick. Each armor slot has a few pieces of gear tied to it, and the Benthic gear has some minor special effects that typically only work in Nashatar or the new raid. Things like finding fish while looting mobs, or gaining access to the super special Murloc's secret wares. Wonder what they are. If you're going after a specific effect, be sure you know which slot it's tied to so you don't buy the wrong benthic token. Each piece of gear has fixed stats too, so if that's more important and you want very specific stat combinations, you should do a bit of research on the available pieces of gear before jumping straight into buying tokens. I'll give you a link in the comment section below to a wowhead page that lists all of the available benthic gear so you can peruse that at your own leisure. So that's 385 item level sorted, but how do we go further? Well, you can upgrade the Benthic gear in several increments. Hop on over to the only ethereal chap hanging around in your faction hub of Najatar, and he'll be glad to upgrade your Benthic gear if you have enough of the new Najatar currency, Mana Pearls. The first upgrade will take your gear up to item level 400, and it will set you back 20 Mana Pearls. From there, things get a bit more expensive. 10 Mana Pearls to get up to item level 405, then 15 Mana Pearls if you want to go up to 410. The next upgrade costs 25 Mana Pearls for 415, and then 50 Mana Pearls to upgrade to 420. To take a Benthic piece up another 5 item levels to 425, it's going to cost you 100 Mana Pearls. At this point, it's definitely quite expensive, and these mana pearls have a lot of other uses. You're going to want to use them on a bunch of other goodies from the faction vendors, so you're going to have to make a pretty big decision here. To buy a piece of Benthic gear and upgrade it all the way to 425, it's going to cost you 225 mana pearls, if my maths isn't completely garbage. And I did double check this with our good friend the old calculator, so you're going to have to do quite a bit of farming down in Nazjatar, 
if you want to gear up solely through the Benthic gear system. It's a really nice option for anyone who doesn't want to raid, and getting a full set of 400 item level gear is incredibly fast and easy. That's the initial upgrade, it's not too bad. It's only really the upgrades past that that start to slow things down, but you have the potential to get 420 item level just from this new catch-up mechanic in Najjatar. Now there are a few slots that the Benthic gear doesn't cover. You won't find any weapons, trinkets, or rings, but Mechagon can help fill in a few of those gaps. One of the first things you obtain in Mechagon is the new computation device trinket. This is rather special in that the trinket itself doesn't do anything, it's just an empty shell. But you do have the ability to slot in three different colours of punch cards. The yellow and red ones are the most important ones here because they actually affect your throughput, the blue ones are just minor out of combat effects. The yellow card provides the trinket with stats, while the red card provides the trinket with an effect. You get the trinket very early on, as I said, but you also get a yellow and a red card to use right after you get the trinket. So if you're missing a trinket slot for your gear catch-up, Mechagon has you covered already. Only takes like 10 minutes. You will also be able to pick up a wide variety of punch cards from the Mechagon Zone and Dungeon later on, including from rep and bosses, so this trinket will stay somewhat relevant for almost everyone before the new raid comes out. You can also grab some rings and another trinket from the Mechagon Zone too, but these require a little more time investment. You actually kind of craft these items yourself at Pascal King, the robot who creates anything and everything in Mechagon. But there's a catch. Two catches, actually, I guess. The first catch is that you need the blueprints. The second catch is that you need quite a lot of spare parts to start crafting your items. The blueprints are pretty easy to come by, and they come in different tiers. The first unlock will allow you to craft 395 items level rings or trinkets, and the blueprint comes from random rares around the island. I'm pretty sure any rare can drop it, so just kill any of the rares you come across and cross your fingers. That's a pretty good item level for such an easy to obtain craft, but you can actually go a bit higher. At Honored Reputation with the Rust Bolt Rebellion, you can pick up the Advanced Augment Blueprint, which will allow you to make 410 rings or trinkets, and then at Revered you can go higher once more and get the Extraordinary Augment Blueprint, which kicks it up again to 420 rings or trinkets. As you earn more rep with this new faction, you unlock higher item level ring and trinket options to help fill in the gaps left by the Benthic gear system. The spare parts are another issue entirely. Some of the parts required are the rarer ones, so you want to complete the one world quest you get each day for the Mechagon Zone, and then spend a little bit of time killing off any rares you come across, hunting for some treasure chests, and maybe consider grinding out some mobs for at least 10 minutes or so. That should get you well on your way to crafting some of these catch-up rings and trinkets. So at this point you can already get up to 420 to 430 item level pretty easily with just time investments. No dungeons, no raids, honestly no difficult content whatsoever. So if you want to take things slow, you still have plenty of gearing options which is really interesting. I don't think we've been able to go this far with item level without the typical sources of gearing in quite a while. There's also some new crafted gear, if you want to take advantage of that kind of thing. I'm not talking about the PvP crafted gear here, because that starts at item level 370, and in my opinion isn't really worth considering unless you have to skip a few item levels to get into a specific queue. The Benthic gear is higher item level and incredibly easy to obtain, so I would look into that first. The crafted gear I want to touch on is the new almost raid equivalent gear. There's 410, 425, and 440 item level pieces for tailors, leatherworkers and blacksmiths to craft. Engineers also get the 415, 430 and 445 goggles, so they do get a bit of a better deal out of this for the most part. Unlike the previous raid tiers where you had to collect a raid specific item to craft these pieces, all of them just require basic materials. So if you collect enough Osmanite ore, or whatever else you may need, and have the expulsum ready to go, you can actually craft these items fairly easily. There is a catch though, as there usually is, the crafted gear requires a special Naga focus. You have to find and build this focus up yourself. You can start the quest for it by picking up the broken focus out in Najjatar, I'll show you exactly where that is on the map in a second, but just run around until you see the exclamation mark on your map in this area, and that should be the focus. Pick up the quest, turn it in at your faction hub, and you can start Start the process of building it back up. 
Now I think you might actually have to have a profession at 150 skill to be able to see the quest to begin with, because my demon hunter can't see it right now, but my wife's priest can, and that's the only significant difference between us that I can think of, and it makes sense, because this quest is solely related to professions and the new crafted gear. To restore the focus, you will need 15 abyssal shards. These can be purchased from the ancient relics vendor nearby for 5 mana pearls each, which comes together for a grand total of 75 mana pearls to fix this thing up. That first installment will allow you to craft the 410 crafted gear. To go beyond that, I do believe you'll need some raid materials, and the quest isn't available yet. So even though the craft itself doesn't require any raid materials, we'll still have to wait for the raid to open up to progress the focus so we can actually craft the higher item level gear. So for right now, that's an extra 410 piece of gear, which is easily obtainable. And as we look into the future, that focus will help provide you with 440 item level gear, which is definitely going to be a nice boost. Apart from the new sources of gear in Najatar and Mechagon, I think we're going to have to wait until Season 3 of Battle for Azeroth starts to go anywhere else with your item level. The first major source of gear in Season 3 is going to be the new raid. No matter what gear you have going into this raid tier, you're going to be able to get some seriously awesome upgrades. Normal starts out at 415 item level, which is what the Mythic Raiders were getting in the Battle of Desar Alor raid. Heroic bumps that up to 430 item level, which will be an upgrade for pretty much everyone at that point in time, even if you were rocking full Titan Forged gear up until the raid release. I can't wait to get into that raid and start gearing up again, but the week after the raid opens, we'll also have access to Mythic Difficulty, which will be dropping 445 item level gear. That is a crazy jump from where we were in the Battle of Desert Alor, so I imagine we're going to see some huge DPS numbers from this point onwards. So the raid is really the same old same old when it comes to gearing up. It's going to be the main source of huge upgrades and we'll all be working through it slowly but surely. There are some other options on the table in Season 3 though. The new Mechagon Mega Dungeon will offer up some decent rewards too. This dungeon opens up at the same time as the raid on July 9th, so we will have to wait for this one as well, but it has some interesting rewards. The base item level starts at 415, which is on par with the normal raid, but should be much easier to acquire. So that could be a really useful stepping stone to get yourself ready for the raid on heroic difficulty. Some of the items have unique effects too, like the logic loops and bit bands. These go together as a little set to provide you with an extra set of effects. But the cool thing is, is you get to choose how the effect triggers and what the effect you want to use is. So you could create an effect that triggers when you hit an enemy from behind and the effect is to deal a bit of extra damage pretty straightforward. Or you could change things up and help out your healers and provide some off healing as your special effect. You can chop and change the rings to create a whole range of specialized effects, which is really cool. Honestly, with Titan Forging still being a thing, I wouldn't be surprised if people were going after these rings with the hope of them getting super upgraded, because they are potentially very useful. You can also get a wide array of punch cards for the computation trinket, so clearing through the Mechagon dungeon is probably going to be on everyone's list for one reason or another. And then the Mythic Plus dungeon system is also getting scaled up alongside everything else. In Season 3, Mythic Dungeons will drop item level 400 loot, so if you really wanted to, you could gear up in Benthic gear and use the Mechagon Trinkets to get close to 400, and then just go straight into Mythic Plus dungeons. Mythic Plus has always been a ridiculously efficient way to gear up this expansion and in Legion. It's actually really crazy. If you have the time to get through a few dungeons, and if you have someone to help trade your gear, you can rock it all the way up to heroic raiding gear in a few days. Don't get me wrong, it takes a lot of time and effort, you still have to actually run and complete the dungeons in time, but we've never had so many gearing options before in World of Warcraft. With Classic just around the corner, it's really interesting to see how much has changed and just kind of compare the two. But let's let's not get into that right now. In Season 3, the max item level gear you can get from the end of Dungeon Chest will probably match the heroic raiding item level as it usually does, which would be item level 430. We will have to wait until the Mythic Raid releases a week after for that item level to become available though. They usually delay it so we can't gear up too fast before the Mythic Raid releases. If the dungeons were dropping 430 item level gear, nobody would be running the heroic raid. But a week after Season 3 opens up, all of this will become available. Available. The weekly chest will also cap out at 5 item levels below Mythic Raiding Gear, which is 440 item level, so be sure to get your plus 10s done each week as we go forward. The start of the patch is the most important time to get geared up. You don't want to get left behind if you have an interest in raiding or organized PvE in general. 
So, to quickly recap, start off your gearing adventures in Najatar with the Benthic gear. You can upgrade it if you want, and you can upgrade it really far if you really want to, but it's going to cost you a lot of mana pearls. You can't get Benthic trinkets or rings, but you can fill in those slots by tinkering around on Mechagon. Be sure to get that computation trinket, by the way, even if you have higher item level stuff already. That trinket promises to be quite powerful, despite its restricted item level. After that, we're into the usual stuff, Mythic Plus Dungeons, the new Mega Dungeon in Mechagon, and the new Raid. But we'll have to wait until Season 3 releases on July 9th to sink our teeth into all of that stuff. Before we head out, I do want to quickly touch on the new Essence system for the Heart of Azeroth. This won't increase your item level at all, but it is going to be incredibly important for your character power. You'll want to work your way through the Najdatar intro to unlock the Heart Forge as soon as possible so you can start to collect Essences. These come from a wide variety of content, and you can even see where each of them come from by hovering over the Essence you're interested in. My personal goal before the raid comes out is to collect each Essence at rank 1 at least, partly because I want to collect them all and partly because we have no idea which ones are going to really prove to be the best Essences in any given situation, so having the ability to pick and choose is going to be important. Some of them do require Season 3, which is a bit of a nuisance, obviously, but you can still get the majority of them. Some require quest progress in the new zones, some require reputation, some just require a few battlegrounds. Have a look through them, see what you think you can obtain pretty quickly, and go after them. As the weeks roll by, we'll be able to go after higher and higher rarities, which is super exciting for me. But that's how you can get your item level up to and beyond 430 in the coming weeks. And that's it for this video. What do you think of the new zones in patch 8.2 so far? Has anything really stuck out as super awesome? Or maybe something has stuck out as kind of terrible? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon. You can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave. If you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks. Good luck and have fun. And as always, I will see you next time.